If you ever rode an ox cart or a micro bus or even a Peace Corps jeep down the bumpy and dusty roads of the Campo of Paraguay and from 1968 onwards, it might have been just like this. But now fast forward more than four decades to a town south of Portland, to the home of Jerry and Eileen Bowl in Albany, Oregon. Most of us Peace Corps volunteers served in Paraguay from 1968 to 70, and nothing has changed. Well, almost nothing. I think I counted 25, maybe 26 of us fitting comfortably into Jerry and Eileen's home. And, of course, there was also Antonio Centurion from Paraguay, who now lives in Portland. And he brought his Paraguayan heart. Now, you know, I've shared with, with others, there's, you get kick-started somehow internally and mentally. That, heck, it's a good idea, and we've got a big house, we've got a nice yard, mm -hmm. let's pray for nice weather. You have everything. And I think it, uh, it all came together. Any, any regrets? No regrets? Is, I just wish I'd had some more sleep. <laughs> <laughs> and this isn't quite fair because you serve not just one two year duty but yeah. two two year duties. Yeah. <laughs> Sum up in a paragraph on the spot without thinking about it. Yeah. Your collective four or five year Peace Corps experience. Well, it was four years. And how can you measure the value of living uh, very close to uh, two different cultures uh, and in two different languages and learning to know people at a personal level uh, through those through the media land. Language. That's incalculable. Something I'll take to my No regrets? No regrets. Thanks, Eric. And a collective thanks from all of us. For you and Eileen, in the awesome way you opened your home and your heart store. Yeah, we'll, we'll get it out of here. <laughs> you know, I, I, I realized I was coming to this reunion right when I. This is going to be sad. Is when I Googled and I found that Gillette was dead. And I realized, I, you know, I can't let I can't let any more people go without seeing them. I just didn't do that. <laughs> any regrets? About this trip? Absolutely none. <laughs> I had no expectations other than I was going to really, really want to connect with people. And one quick last question. What about that connection after 42, 43 years? Did it live up to your expectations? He's dead. It's only 41. Um, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, even more. I mean, it exceeded my ex expectations because I, I, it's like I didn't have any expectations. I just knew that I wanted to meet Wonderful. up Wonderful. Thank you. Rick Smith called me and was about five, six months ago and told me told me that the reunion was going to take place. I tried to find people that were over the years that were in this group and Googling primarily. I never could find anyone. I, I didn't know where everybody, where anyone was. And I was pretty shocked when he called me and told me that this that Jerry had put this together. And that they had found all, the, all uh, the majority of the people who were with in Paraguay. Did it slightly amaze you as it did me that we really had an intimate shared experience for two years and 40 some years have passed without anybody really making a serious effort for all of us to get together? Yeah, I always wondered about that. You know, I wondered, you know, did everybody want to put that experience behind them? And, and, and I, I was kind of disappointed in me to think that way because that, that experience was so, uh, that was very important in my life. I, I maintain and I tell, I tell everybody that that, that and a couple of other things I've done in my life are the most significant things that I've ever been exposed it was, to. It was the most transformational period of my life without exception. I would agree, we had to use that word transformational. I because mean, I, you know, having my children and my wife, you know, their big deals are exceptional things too, but as far as transforming my life, absolutely, I would absolutely agree with that. No regrets really, about coming? 
Pardon me? Well, no regrets about coming up here? No, not at all. <laughs> thrilled to be here, and I'm glad to see everybody, and I hope we can get together. Uh, you know, I don't want to wait another four. No, I don't either. That's like a half. <laughs> but I'd like to get together sooner, you know, maybe in the next couple of years. And in a nutshell, what was your Peace Corps experience? Well, I, I, I was in Asuncion, and I did two things. I worked for the Ministry of Agriculture there, and then I worked for the Centro de, I think it was called Centro de Adviso and Entrenamiento, which was a training uh, local business, or helping local business people improve their businesses. Mm -hmm. And you look back on it now, and you probably made a couple of mistakes. You probably had a couple of good breaks fall your way. On balance, good experience. Oh, it was an excellent experience. In fact, and I said this last night, I, I don't really believe that you know I accomplished much of anything there as far anything of any there was no legacies. But I learned to speak the language, I, and I speak the language every day now, and it's, it gave me a lot of empathy for uh, you know, people that I'm associated with in California, a lot of Hispanics. I really go out of my way to try and, and uh, make sure that I get the same, that they're treated the same way I was treated. I, the, the, the hospitality I was given and the graciousness that was shown to me when I was in Paraguay, I feel I have to reciprocate. Wonderful. Thanks a whole lot. Hello there. For any of you who happens not to be a Peace Corps volunteer from the years 1968 to 70, my name is Ted Henry. I served in the small Paraguayan town of Casa Paz, south of Villarica from 68 to 70 in the Peace Corps. Had a great time. Like for many of the other volunteers who are watching this and participating in the reunion we just had, it was clearly one of the transformational periods of our lifetime. My apologies up front because I, I'm, a, I'm a television broadcaster but neglected to bring a video camera for this outstanding reunion. And sitting in the middle of Jerry Bull's house, all of a sudden listening to this great Paraguayan harp music, I decided I got to try to document this even though I don't have a video camera. So I took my little still camera, which has a video mode, something I've never used before, and gave it a whirl, and lo and behold, it turned out to be pretty good. It really captured the music very well. Beautiful, nostalgic, Paraguayan harp music. Now, my apologies, because this is not a professionally shot documentary using just this camera, and because on Sunday morning at our Peace Corps reunion breakfast at a local diner where the noise level was about yay high, this little microphone on top of the camera really wasn't sufficient for the interviews I did. So you hear a lot of background noise. Also, a double apology because the memory chip is only this big and only carries uh, enough minutes for so much video. And in the midst of interviewing Steve Deaton, it filled up and I still had several others to interview. So my apologies for that. That out of the way, let's resume the program, <laughs> a documentary. Really, it's just a, a little friendly musical reminder of some wonderful days that we shared together in beautiful Paraguay. chance to see many of these people over the last 42, 43 years that have gone by? The only person I think I've seen is, it was Nancy Kutchel, and she died a few months ago. It turned out we lived within 10 miles of each other. You mean for the first time yeah. since you've been in the Peace Corps, you only met her yeah. a few months ago? Yeah. We've so lived in Alaska for a long time. Yeah. So this has to be quite a, I guess, a revelation and sort of a surprise meeting for you, as it is for most of us. Yes. And did it rise up to the level of your expectations? Oh, fully. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, it's wonderful to see everybody again. So we actually didn't spend that much time together. Mm -hmm. I know that was. We all have this experience in common, but we've never really had. Right. 
I mean, I talked about it at the time with Nancy and Barbara a lot, and, and, with very many other people. And one last question, in, in a phrase, in a sentence, or a paragraph, how was your Peace Corps experience? Was it motivating? Was it shaping? Was it disappointing? Or was it something else? The work was disappointing because it was very frustrating. I didn't feel that I loved being a part of it. I loved the experience. And it was very, very important experience. You mirror my comments almost precisely. Yeah. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. God bless. Steve, the obvious. When did this idea come to you to help with uh, Jerry and and Dick Ginsburg to pull something off of this magnitude for the first time in more than 40 years? Probably about four years ago, a couple of us started talking about it. Uh, Gil Allen, Paco. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, he wasn't here today. I know, he just had a, a death in the family. Mm -hmm. had to go to the funeral. And that was unfortunate because he, I believe he and I were probably the first people that started talking about the concept of having a union. That's about four years ago, in 2007. Mm -hmm. So how would you gauge the turnout? I, I think it's pretty amazing to come up with as many people it is. As, as you did. We had 14 that were actually here and one who was supposed to be here being Gil Allen Paco who couldn't make it. 14 volunteers plus one honorary volunteer, Rosalia Ginsburg. Cantale un poco. <laughs> I get the map Paraguay. Rosalia was born and raised in Paraguay, and she'll have ample time to tell her part of the Peace Corps story connection later on. And then the other ten or so people here, all spouses of returned Peace Corps volunteers. <laughs> I think I'm going to take this little speck of time for a few house cleaning items. First, my hope is that this video somehow becomes seen by many of the Paraguay 68 Peace Corps volunteers whom we were not able to contact for this year. We'd love to see or hear from all of you one day. To keep it simple, you can always email me your contact information at newsguy55 at aol.com. And then, of course, I'll pass it along to all the others. And oh yes, for those of you who don't know, Steve Deaton has already emailed us with a suggestion that we all get together again, maybe in 2014, maybe in Paraguay, for another grand reunion. Your job, spread the word, talk it up, and think about getting together one more time, perhaps even at the Lido Bar. It's still there. The minute I got Jerry's email saying that he was going to do a reunion of our 68 group, I knew immediately that I was coming. And I chose to come because I have never lost my connection to Paraguay. Oh, wonderful, I, wonderful. And did it live up to your expectations? It uh, far exceeded my expectations. Okay. It's absolutely the most amazing experience I've had in many years. And right off the top of your head, the single reason why you likely have no regrets for having visited this far off land called Paraguay. Um, why I have no regrets? No. Why, why you had, why you were glad you went there. I was glad I went there. Oh, I was, well, I, you know, all my life I wanted to go to Africa. 
I wanted to be Doctari, and I wanted to be Jungle Jim. I wanted to follow, him. and to find that there was a jungle in Paraguay, which when I first was assigned there, I had no idea where it was. I had to get out my atlas and look it up. Um, it was it was the place of my dreams, basically. Is, uh, ever since a small child, that was my dream was to go to jung go live in the jungle and take care of wild animals. Wonderful. God bless you. Thank you very much. Really appreciate having this chance to see you again. Welcome. Seeing you. so much fun to have all these people from around the country be in your state, in your community, at your buddy's house for this Peace Corps reunion. Reflect on it a little bit about what you thought it might be when you guys first started to talk about it. Well, I really didn't know uh, because a lot of these people I didn't know very well. We had been together in Peace Corps training for three months and then we had dispersed throughout the country of Paraguay. And I really didn't know a lot of these people very well. It wasn't like going back to a high school reunion. Yeah, you can't quite categorize it, no. can you? No. So I, uh, I was, uh, I was very curious to see how it was going to be, and I was just very impressed with everyone, uh, the adventures they had. Uh, they're all very intelligent people, and they've all taken this experience that they had uh, in the Peace Corps and done great things with it in their their lives. And, and, big contributions. And whose idea was it to bring in the Musica Paraguaya into the living room and entertain us so much? Uh, that was Rosalia and, and, and my idea. Uh, we've known Antonio for many years and uh, so we just uh, wanted to uh, bring him in. We know uh, the emotions that music brings out in us when we hear that Paraguayan music. It just kind of gets to your emotional center and uh, it just had to be part of this reunion. And did you feel it last night when he started to play? Absolutely. Antonio, I felt it. Yeah, he's such a good guy. Emotional. Where did you find here in Oregon uh, I guess he's a Paraguayan Americano. I don't know. Oh, no, he, he's from Paraguay. You know, he called me one day probably 20 some years ago and he had heard about me that I was married to a Paraguayan and he had just come to the States and he was so excited to find someone from Paraguay and he, someone had given him my name and phone number. <laughs> Amazing. And uh, that started a great friendship. And I'll talk to Rosalia in a second but for those who might be seeing this who knows down the Peace Corps pipeline 
people we haven't heard from in 40 years who may not know that you spent more than two years in Paraguay, four or five. I was there almost four years. And you married somebody you fell in love with from your region there. Well, Rosalia was in Asuncion, the capital, and I had a bout with hepatitis after a trip to Argentina. Oh, and she stuck you in the butt, as I recall. That's right. <laughs> she woke me up, they stuck me in the hospital, and I slept for 24 hours, and she came in with a hypodermic, and uh, <laughs> that started it. And it's been a 37-year marriage. And, we're, and a beautiful, happy marriage, because every time I'm around you two, we're from the same hometown in Canton, Ohio, so I see you back in Cleveland or Canton, or here when I'm out to visit my daughter in Portland. Yeah. It's it just it just simply lifts my heart to be around Rosalia and you too, of course. Well, <laughs> it lifts my heart to be around her too. So for 37 years. So how would you rate the the reunion and what's the prospects of having a second one for maybe those who would like to come have it be there first? You know, it was uh, it was much better than I my my dream. Uh, I just really, it, it, it transported us all back 43 years to the day uh, that we arrived in uh, Paraguay, December 22nd, 1968, and the experiences we had, uh, it was just wonderful. And will there be another one? Why not? But Why not? We'll do it in Paraguay. And that's exactly right. We were talking at breakfast this morning. This is a three-day event. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Friday evening, all day Saturday, and then Sunday morning. For, for breakfast before people took off and Paraguay seemed like the logical location for perhaps a follow-up reunion. That's right. I think, I think so. Thanks I vote lot. for that. Let's get a little insight from Rosalia. She's the one authentic, genuine Paraguayan who could really assist us with this. Well, not me, I didn't do anything. Yeah. But you guys pulled together this reunion so well, including not just the heart that you have and the music that you facilitated and the food that you brought for us, but your love and your warmth. That's Paraguayan. And not too many people have a chance to really feel that 
growing up in America, but that's what I first recognized as a Peace Corps volunteer, and that's what I ended up missing the most when I left your beautiful country. Thank you, Ted. So a little bit about the, <laughs> about La Gente Paraguaya. La Gente Paraguaya, okay. Well, I was talking actually to Dick about this and uh, how we are welcoming people, just about anybody from any country. Um, it's a welcoming that we do from the heart. Uh, very whenever clear. somebody comes, and even in the smallest town and the least educated, the children, everybody is going to run and see who is new in town. Yeah. And, and we just enjoy. In Paraguay, we enjoy people that come from other places. Well, and then last night you duplicated Paraguay here in the state of Oregon for us, and there, I don't think there were too many dry eyes in the crowd shortly after the music started when your mutual friend Antonio started to play the harp That's right. and it just resonated not only familiar songs that we lived with and loved in Paraguay but it actually touched people in their hearts I believe. I, I saw people misting up some much more than others as uh, I call it Una Noche Tibia. What's the name of that song again? Yeah. Uh, the, Recuerdos de, de Paraí. De, de and, and we all sang it and every person were doing the the music. They were all play, singing together and uh, and it was beautiful. It was beautiful because uh, they all joined and it, it seems like the whole world was making music for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> well, you sang the most <laughs> because you knew the lyrics the most. But you also did something else with one of these songs. Do you remember what the song was that prompted you and Dick to get up in the kitchen and dance together? We don't dance. We both have to <laughs> left feet. Uh, I don't <laughs> but, think so. Uh, but we decided to move around. The music just impressed us so much that we decided to start moving and it was a instant connection with the <laughs> and let's dance like the soldiers dance, you know, with the hands <laughs> up on the side. Yeah, it yeah. was so cute. I was, was so fun. glad I saw it. It was and really it fun. Just did a, a little bit of recording of it <laughs> and then it'll right. it'll be something that'll be with us all for a long time. Oh, thank you. And again. then a word also about the food. I mean, I think the only thing we didn't have last night, I used to call them galletas, uh, uh, those little hard golf balls. golf balls that we used to have, at least in my pueblo, in Casa right, Pa. That's right. But we had mandioca. We, uh, we had batatas. Batatas? And, and sopa paraguaya? Sopa We had chipaguazu that Amanda made, and then we also have chicharron who eat tea. And we had my favorite. Just, yeah. yeah. I mean, the, just the plain chipa? mandioca. Chipa, yeah. Chipa, we had chipa that I used to send to you at the last... People don't realize that I had my own little source for fresh made chipa you know, from Oregon worked. and uh -huh. go out to the mailbox and have chipa in my mailbox <laughs> in Cleveland. <laughs> and healthy chipa. Yeah, healthy chipa in a way, yes. <laughs> well, is there healthy chipa? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, there is, of course. Yeah. Uh, well, but that was all your idea to uh, uh, with Amanda? and uh, uh, With Amanda, is she, we... Uh, we talked on the phone and she was going to make no, to make the um, chipawasu mm -hmm. and then I was going to make the other food. Is that, that the own. chipawasu you talk, is, is that sopa paraguaya? I no, mean, sopa paraguaya is made just with the flour, okay. the corn flour, but the chipawasu is made with mm -hmm. the fresh corn. And of course we had uh, yes. yerba mate and tereré. Um, we had mate there going, <laughs> yes, I think it was circulating. But the only thing that wasn't there was aristocrata. <laughs> y para piti. <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh, or I think there might have were there ever any Paraguayan cigarettes? I know people who smoked cigarettes back then used to smoke them from Brazil. They were Brazilian imports. But Just, I don't uh, think there are any Paraguayan. The hand rolled ones that the old ladies would make in the campo. That, that I remember. Cigarros. Yeah. The cigarros. cigarros. Yeah. yeah. And then I think it was Marlboro, the one that was in Paraguay. Okay. Yeah. I think it was too. I remember I that. So. Yeah. Of course, I tried everything, including the Brazilian <laughs> cigarettes. I think they cost nine Guaranis a package. Oh, wow. And they had little worm holes in the paper every once in a while. That was a distinct... <laughs> but you didn't mind. <laughs> wow. They smoked just as well as tobacco. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, any final word on um, what we might do if someday people want to do this again and have a second reunion? I mean, it's only taken us 41 years to get our act together. If we choose to go to Paraguay, would we be welcome back there? Oh, of course. 
course it will be welcome. It's Paraguay hasn't changed in a way. People still welcome people. People still want to see you in the towns. Every time we return with Dick in the town where, where he was a Peace Corps volunteer, everybody just really loved to see him. And, and I think uh, with the children and all, we used to go back quite often. Yeah. Well, let me take my unofficial role to thank both Eileen and Jerry Bull and Rosalia and Dick for all the work you did because I can't imagine the hundreds of hours that went into just preparing for our arrival because we took over the joint when we landed there in Albany, yeah. Oregon. It was fun. It's yeah. absolutely fun. Yes. Well, Ted, we thank you for and a lifetime of knowing you. <laughs> That's right. And let's make it another lifetime. Yeah. We'll, we'll keep this going as long as we can. Thank you both very much and God bless you. Now, before we end this program, I, I want to present two last video numbers that I think you'll find enjoyable. They might not necessarily relate to your Peace Corps experience, at least the first one, but they do to mine. And when I saw this on the Internet, I couldn't resist it, and so I copied it, and I, I'm uploading it to this particular video. It's music by Luis Alberto del Paraná. Do you remember him? I didn't know of him when I was in the Peace Corps, but he was extraordinarily popular, not just in Paraguay, but around the world in the 50s in the 60s and the early 70s. So that would have included the time we were there. This particular song is also world famous, but he plays it in a distinctly, decidedly different style, which I think you'll enjoy. In fact, I know you'll enjoy this video. It's a little grainy, it's pretty old, but it's about a song that became very popular back in the 60s, at least as far as I can remember. And even though it's international in flavor, uh, it, it, especially in the Spanish-speaking worlds, his style, I think, is something you'll enjoy very much. Pay attention to his conjunto, to the fellows performing and singing with him. They're just a riot. I've seen this video a half a dozen, heck, a dozen times, and I've smiled and laughed my way through it each time because it's so delightful. Here he is right now, and don't forget, stay tuned for the last video immediately following this particular song. Here's Luis Alberto del Parana and La Bamba. Porque me gusta chica de quizá veinte Y arriba, y arriba, y arriba iré Yo no soy marinero por ti seré Sombrero me lo quito me lo pongo. Ay, longo, ay, longo, ay, longo. Mi sombrero me lo quito y me lo pongo. ¡Pía! Tiene gracia de amoto. Bamba la bamba bamba, bamba la bamba bamba, bamba la bamba bamba, bamba la bamba bamba. Ali longo, ali longo, ali longo. Mi sombrero me lo quito y me lo pongo. Ali longo, ali longo, ali longo. Mi sombrero me lo quito y me lo pongo. 
I told you you would enjoy this. True Paraguayans, truly gifted. And best of all, you can watch it over and over again. As you can also watch this to help you better memorize the words of our collective favorite song from Paraguay. Of course, many of us managed to mangle this song earlier at Jerry's house, but these titles should help you. For Peace Corps Paraguay 1968. Muchas gracias. Y adios. Una noche Junto al agua azul de Ipacaraí Tú cantabas triste por el camino Bellas melodías en guaraní Y con el embrujo de tus canciones Vaya naciendo tu amor en mí Y en la noche hermosa de plenilunio De tus blancas manos sentí el calor Que con sus caricias me dio el amor ¿Dónde estás ahora cuña caí? Que tu suave canto no llega a mí ¿Dónde estás ahora? Mi ser te añora con frenesí Todo te recuerda mi dulce amor Junto al agua azul de Pacaraí Vuelve para siempre Mi amor te espera Cuñataí canciones y vaya naciendo tu amor en mí y en la noche hermosa de plenilunio de tus blancas manos sentí el calor que con sus caricias me dio el amor ¿Dónde estás ahora? Que tu suave canto no llega a mí ¿Dónde estás ahora? Mi ser te añora con frenesí Todo te recuerda mi dulce amor Junto al agua azul de Pacaraí Vuelve para siempre mi amor te espera
voz, dame un poco de agua fresca de tu cántaro de amor, dame un poco de agua fresca de tu cántaro de amor.